What's up, what's up guys? It's me, Sean John, AKA the Middleman CEO. And today I wanna to talk to you about a couple things that keep most people in financial trouble. So if you don't know my story, uh, in 2020, I started my middleman business. I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know anything about money. In fact, I, there had never been a time before that where I had an abundance of money or I lived in abundance. It was always lack, lack, lack. And so what I didn't understand, because I always thought I had a money problem, but I didn't understand that I had problems with other things and money, money wasn't the real issue. It was, it was some other things. Uh, and most importantly, it was my mindset. So I always say your mindset is more important than the money. And the reason I say that is because you have, if you have a, like, if you have a, what's the, the probably the best word to say it, if you have a mindset that is contrary to, you know, using money to better your life or to change your life, if you have a mindset that works or opposes the the rules of money, then it's not going to work in your favor. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the things that the poor and middle class focus on when it comes to money that keeps them in under uh, under financial trouble uh, or under financial pressure. That's a better word, right? And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. If you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed, go ahead and consider hitting the subscribe button. Go ahead and smash it. If you get value from any of my videos, smash the thumbs up. And really quickly, for all the students who are in the Middleman CEO Masterclass, part five of the Masterclass has dropped. So all you have to do is go and enroll and you get all of that access for free. It doesn't cost you anything. Go check it out. We're going to talk about how to scale your business now that your business is up and running. Let's talk about how to grow it and make more money and reach more people. And so that's going to be in that two hour uh, additional training. It's going to bless you. It's going to change your life. And you're going to walk away from it going, oh my gosh, wow. So Go log in and click that. And for everyone who wants to know what am I talking about, I'm talking about owning your own business from your phone. It's called Middleman CEO. Uh, I teach you how to run a middleman business where you just do three things really quickly, just three things. I teach you how to use your phone to book customers, how to use your phone to get paid, take a deposit. That's your commission. On average, we want to take about $150 for every customer we book. And then I want to teach you how to dispatch the work to an ISP or independent service professional who actually goes out and do the work. So for instance, if this were, uh, or in my business, I book jobs for uh, moving customers, right? But I don't actually do the moving. I don't own a moving truck or crew or anything because I don't want to do the work. I only want to find the customer. So I teach you guys how to find the customer, how to be Uber. Uber doesn't actually drive you around. It's someone else doing that, but Uber connects you. So I teach you how to connect the customer to a business, in this case, the ISP who does the work. So if I'm in the moving industry, a customer will reach out to me and you can choose whatever industry you want. Uh, I have students in cleaning, heating, AC, pest control, window tinting, mobile detailing, pressure washing, TV mounting, <laughs> all over the place, whatever you want to choose. And so website design, graphic design, you name it. And so I'll simply get a customer, book them by capturing their informo information. Then I'll take a DC, a deposit commission. This goes into my account, my 150. Uh, I, most phone calls take about five to seven minutes to make $150 in most cases. Because I try to teach you to be around 150. Some do 100, some do 250. I just try to teach you to be here. And then I dispatch the work to an ISP who actually goes out and does the work and not me. So I'll book a moving customer. Hey, where are you when you need to get moved? Okay, it's this much and I need a deposit. They pay me. Then I send the work to a mover who actually goes out and does the moving. So if that's something you want to learn how to do, I teach that. In fact, you can get into the free live training that's coming up this Thursday. And all you have to do to get the free invite to learn how to do this and to learn the blueprint, it's going to be... Uh, probably about an hour long, something like that, but it's going to be worth it. But if you want to get into that free live training with me, uh, we do Q and a, we have a great time, but it's very limited, uh, on how many people can get in. So get there early 7 PM Thursday night, Texas time. So that's central time. If you want to get in, all you have to do is put the word middleman in the comments below middleman in the comments below, or go to the video description and grab the zoom link. All right, let's get into it. So these are things that hold back 
uh, the middle class and, and the poor. And when I say poor guys, I'm not talking about, you know, people that are homeless like I used to be or living out of their cars like I've done more than once. It ain't fun. Trust me, you don't want to do it. Just take my word. Some things, it's you're better off just taking somebody else's word. Just take my word. It ain't fun. You don't want to do it. Uh, I never want to do that again. So I'm always focused on how to change my life, how to get money and how to live a life. So uh, a couple of things that the poor and the middle class focus on that keeps them in financial trouble. Uh, probably the biggest thing that you guys focus on that limit you the most is going to be your house, buying houses, right? So the poor and the middle class, they love to buy houses, right? But the problem is how they buy the house. The, most of them buy the house with a paycheck. So I always say I'm not against buying houses. I'm just against buying houses with paychecks. If you buy a house with a paycheck, then that means you need a job. If you have a job, that means you have to sell your time for a little bit of money. A lot of your time for a little bit of money. And that's where the saying time equals money come from. And that's a poor middle class saying because time equals money means that you have to sell your time to get money. So time becomes the product that you sell. In fact, I always say that you pay the job more to go to work than they pay you to go to work because you pay them in time. Time is more valuable than money is. If you don't believe me, then let me write you a check for $10 million. You go to the bank and cash it. But as soon as you do, you run out of time. Who's going to cash it? Nobody. Because time is more valuable than money. So buying a house keep you guys in a lot of trouble. I say don't buy houses with paychecks because if you do, you're going to have to have a job and which means you're going to have to sell your time for money, which is a bad deal uh, because eventually you're going to run out of time, right? And that's not a way to build wealth. That's a way to pass down poverty, right? So the poor and middle class, they focus on buying houses. Poor and middle class, uh, the, uh, again, yeah, I always say like, man, people are addicted to buying houses. The, the housing crash you've been waiting on, it's already happened. You, you didn't see it because the houses went up so high. It kind of looked like this, where a, let's say, $300,000 house went all the way up to seven hundred, dollars right? And then that house crashed to six hundred. dollars There's your crash. It's never going to go back to this. There's your crash. How do I know it's over? Interest rates have been cut. People are going to dive back into the housing market and drive these prices back up. We're in very dangerous times. So if you believe uh, that you're safe financially and a job is your only source of income, no good. So which brings me to my second point uh, for poor and the middle class. I kind of hit it to, on it just now. Perfect segue. You guys focus on having jobs as your only source of income. Right. You love buying houses. You're addicted to buying houses. The problem is what they cost you. And so you guys are addicted to having jobs. Time equals money. Again, <laughs> that can that can be attributed to both. Uh, but the problem with the job is it's your only. Only source of income. If your job is the only source of income, that's a no, no. Problem is, if you lose your job, you have no way to take care of yourself. So I always tell you, have an additional source of income, right? So instead of focusing on a paycheck to buy a house, how about focus on cash flow to buy a house? There's the alternative, right? So this is what the poor do, and then this is what the rich do. They focus on cash flow. The poor focus on having a paycheck. The, the poor focus on having a job as their only source of income. The rich, they don't. They don't think that way. They focus on right? Additional sources of income. So we'll just put streams, right? See the difference? Paycheck, job, only source of income where the rich, they focus on, Hey, I have to have different streams of income because if anything happens, I want to be leveraged, right? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, hedged. I want to be hedged against anything that can happen. But the poor to middle class, they don't think that way. They only think about I got to go to work. I got to get that job. If I need extra money, I got to get another job. I got to sell more time. And so you don't want to be in that position. Housing, jobs, and the last one, it's probably going to make you mad. Savings accounts. Right? People, poor and middle class are addicted to having savings accounts because they believe in these things called rainy days and emergencies. 
And I know life happens, don't get me wrong, but you guys are addicted to putting money in banks. You're, you're addicted to buying houses, addicted to having a job as your only source of income. You never think outside of that box and you're addicted to having money in a savings account in case there's a rainy day on an emergency, right? And so what, what happens? You put your money in a savings account, you manifest rainy days or emergencies, and uh, your, money, your money goes to the bank to die, right? Money dies in banks, right? So your money's dead because it's sitting in the bank. So money is a currency. But the, only, the only way money works is it's moving. Money sitting still is dead money. You put your money in a bank account, you leave it there, dead money, you're broke. But I have 10 grand in the bank. Yeah, but you're broke here. You haven't figured it out. Money ha is designed to be used. If, it, if, you do, if you don't use it, you're broke. Well, look at what the banks do. Do the banks leave it there? No, the banks take it because they know it's dead money if they don't use it. They take it, use it to make more money, pay you 0% interest. What again? 0% interest. Again, how much? 0% interest. So they pay you nothing on your interest. You guys park your money there, leave it there, and you miss opportunity. Whereas the, the rich and the wealthy, they don't leave money in banks. They don't have savings, um, I'm sorry, emergency accounts. They don't have rainy day accounts. You know what they have? Opportunity accounts. I promise you that if, if you stop calling your savings account a savings account and start calling an opportunity account, it'll start affecting your mind and you'll be like, wait a minute, I'm looking for opportunity. I'm not looking to save money. Now, quick example would be, all right, let's say you have, let's say you have, do it up here. Let's say you have 10K in the bank, which is not bad, right? Not a whole lot, not a, not a tiny bit. Feels, feels good to have it. So you have that in your savings, right? Your savings account, you have 10K. And then I'm going to say, all right, so with the 10K being in the bank and you're not using it, what, is it, what does it do for you? It does nothing for you, right? So a better idea would be take some of the money. Let's say you take 2,500, just a, just a small example. And then instead of saving it, you use it for an opportunity. You create a business, you get an investment, you flip a house, you flip a car, I don't care what you do. Uh, you get you use it for an opportunity. And then that thing, after you start working, it produces residual income or what I call cash flow. I always tell you there's two ways you're gonna live this life. You're gonna live this life through earned income, right? Which is a very hard way to live, but that's what the poor and the middle class do. Or you're gonna live your life through cash flow, via cash flow. If you do it via cash flow, guys, uh, earned income, once you use it, it's gone. That's a paycheck. Uh, it, LeBron James makes a lot of money, yes, but it's earned income. When he stops playing for the Lakers, they're gonna stop paying him, right? So earned income, I'm not gonna get into the taxes, but it's the worst tax, the worst tax type of money. So I'd rather live off cash flow. The problem is you guys have a job, you save the money, you do nothing with it. Well, if you had a job, that's fine, but start using some of the money to invest or start a business, to try to create cash flow. Living off of cash flow gives you freedom because you're time free. If your earned income is your only source of money, then you have to continue to sell your time and your time broke. Whereas if it's cash flow, you don't have to sell your time, your time free. So if you have vending machines that make you money, you don't have to sit by the vending machines all day. You don't have to punch a clock. Uh, if you have a middleman business like me and a bunch of the students, then you hire a VA, they run the business for you. You can do whatever you want. Just got off the phone with a friend who was talking about freedom. Jobs don't give you freedom because they require your time. Whereas a business or an investment gives you freedom because they don't require your time, if you set it up correctly. Let me know if this helps, guys. Smash the thumbs up. That's the only way I know. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. Or if you just want to say hi, you're welcome to let me know. But uh, if you guys want to get into the middleman live training coming up Thursday, 7 p.m. Texas time, Central time, then make sure to put the word middleman in the comments below or click the Zoom link that's going to be in the description below. I hope you learned something from this. I hope it blesses you in some way. And uh, But I do this to try to help you guys as much as I can because I didn't have this help. I made a lot of mistakes. So all I try to do, the first thing I try to do, which is the most important, just change the way you think about money. And if I can change the way you think, uh, then we could probably change your financial future if you're willing to just do some things differently. And that's all it is. Anyway, guys, uh, 
I'll see you in the pre-live training. I hope you guys have a wonderful, blessed day. Hit subscribe, hit thumbs up. Welcome to the channel. Peace.